This is the 2023 Volvo V60 Cross Country. And yeah, today we're taking it on a mountain adventure. That's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. The 2023 Volvo V60 Cross Country is a station wagon that is dressed up as a crossover. It competes directly with the Audi A4 Allroad, and it even rubs up against the larger Subaru Outback. Because this is the Cross Country, it has not only a raised body, it also has more ground clearance. You're looking at 8.1 inches. Plus, it has extra off-road goodies like an off-road mode and hill descent control. But before you start salivating over driving up mountains swathed in Scandinavian comfort, we first have to check out the tires. The big limitation we're going to be facing today are these tires. You see, these are P0 All Seasons from Pirelli, and they are a 245-40 R20, which means these are 20-inch rims, which are massive. It also leaves very little sidewall. Um, so the issue we'll have here is obviously potentially scratching these, which I don't want to do. Also, we are lacking grip in the off-road conditions because these are just all seasons. The model we're testing today is the Cross Country Ultimate. That means it comes with a lot of extra features. And on top of that, this particular one has a lot of extra options. So price as it sits, $63,585 US dollars, including destination. For 2023, Volvo is making two significant changes across the lineup. Every single vehicle sold is going to include the Google system. That means that this is fully integrated with Google's profiles and mapping systems. Number two, all Volvos sold are going to be, wait for it, either electric or hybrids. That's right, this is a mild hybrid. It actually has a 13 horsepower helper generator motor in the transmission. That'll improve both economy as well as performance. But now let's dip into the rest of the features of this powertrain. Ultimately, there will be three powertrains available. What we have here is the one in the middle. It's called the B5, and it features a two liter four cylinder engine combined with a turbocharger and a mild hybrid system. Total system output is 247 horsepower and 258 pound feet of torque. EPA rates this setup at 23 miles to the gallon in town and 30 on the highway. In the back, you can fit a surprising amount of stuff. With the second row completely folded, you're looking at up to 60.5 cubic feet of total capacity. But can you sleep in it? It's snug, but yes, yes you can. Under the floor is a space saver spare. Because this is an ultimate trim, it also comes with a 12 volt socket in the back. To close it, you can either close or close and lock. In the second row, I got lots of room for my knees. My feet are a little snug, but they're not too bad. This is where I would be sitting if I were driving and I'm six foot one, legs torso proportionate. Over here, I get an armrest with an integrated cup holder that pops out the front. I also get my own climate controls because this has four zones of climate, which is really neat for a vehicle of this size. Here, I can set three stages of heat on the outbound seats. I can also set my own fan speeds and exact temperature. Below that, I get two USB-C sockets for power. Up front, we have a cabin that is very familiar to anybody who's driven a Volvo. They've really just carried the same design idea into 2023. Let's go ahead and start it up. And yeah, the power button's down here, right? Underneath this really awesome crystal transmission toggle, that's a nice way to control an 8-speed, isn't it? Oh. Now I can also toggle left and right under manual mode to override the 8-speeds. That's kind of cool. Okay, well, let's talk about this interior. 
Um, first and foremost, digital gauge cluster, and it is pretty cool. It's got some nice features going on. We have Speedo on the left, TAC on the right, and we also have Google Maps integrated into the middle. Now that's not perfect though. Um, there is an issue I have with that. I'll get to that in just a minute. Over here, we have infotainment that again has a lot of Google integration. We have the Play Store, Google Assistant, and Maps are the Google icons that really pop out at me. Google has really pushed towards integration of their systems into these vehicles, and I have to say, I, I'm not mad. Google Maps integrated into the gauge cluster. Good idea, right? The issue here that I have is that when I do connect my iPhone, and yes, it is um, plug in via USB-C cable, and I go to Apple Maps, and I hit a navigation point, then all of a sudden, over in the gauge cluster, I have a big old black spot. Maps deactivates. There's no Google Map here, so I have this big black hole most of the time that I'm driving. And I'm not asking for them to necessarily put the turn-by-turn -turn directions, although that is a thing you can do with Apple Maps. They would have to process a system called cards, which some vehicles do support. This one doesn't seem to. Uh, or just leave the map up. Just leave the Google Map. Like when you're in a, a BMW, for example, they have maps integrated into the gauge cluster, and they're always there. You may not be using them for navigation, but you can always see them. So here, I have to choose. If I'm using Apple Maps, I get lesser of a visual experience in this Volvo. That said, if I do go to Google Maps, and this is built in in the vehicle, you do not have to plug your phone in to have Google Maps work. Um, I believe you do have to have a service subscription though for the vehicle so it has cellular data. So Google Maps, um, I can then use voice commands, find the nearest Starbucks. And now at this point, I get to see the overall map in the center cluster, and I get the turn-by-turn -turn map in my gauge cluster, which I really like. That is a very cool use of multiple screens. I just kind of wish that it wouldn't be so much less of an experience with the Apple Maps. We also have some non-Google stuff like XM Radio, uh, which we can, of course, pick all the stations. That is an extra subscription. And we also have this air quality screen, which I really like. I never really thought, hey, I want that in my car, but if you have hay fever, uh, if you have you know fires nearby, you kind of want to monitor your air quality, and this gives you an opportunity to monitor not just exterior air quality, you also get to measure how good the air quality is in the cabin. Uh, and then moving on down, we also have digital controls for climate. Now, I usually prefer climate uh, to have physical buttons down below. And yeah, this is okay. It actually moves very quickly. It's a very fluid system. Uh, so that kind of makes it more bearable to have the screen control. And here I can control both the main climate as well as rear seat climate. I can also um, set up air purification while the vehicle is parked. That's cool. Cameras are well appointed. Uh, this does have a backup camera with tracking lines. And it also goes one step further with a full 360. Drive modes. Volvos used to have a little toggle down here, or at least some other models have a little toggle for your drive modes. Not so here. In fact, this doesn't really have drive modes. What? <laughs> 2023 model and has no drive modes? I'm actually okay with that because what are drive modes? They're essentially just presets for preferences. And really, when you're getting into like sport setting and eco setting, I mean, they're not really doing a lot, at least on most vehicles, until you get into the upper dollars where they're really like configuring suspension and a bunch of other things. In this case, it's really just personal preferences that you would be switching. So for here, they put them into uh, the settings menu uh, under driving, and there we can set uh, not only the feeling of the steering wheel, uh, lane keep, uh, how aggressive it is, uh, we can also do the pilot assist for steering assist, uh, but also we can pick the off-road mode. And we'll get to the off-road mode a little bit later in this video, but just so you know, it's buried in the menu. It is not a quick toggle down here anymore. We also have these seats, which are really comfortable. I love the contouring, and of course they have two positions of memory, both on the driver and passenger side. They are heated, they are cooled, and the steering wheel is heated as well. So you can see we have a really nice package going on in terms of comfort and function. 
Oh yeah, this also, of course, because it's a Volvo, has a lot of extra safety stuff. It has collision mitigation that actually detects pedestrians. It also comes standard with blind spot, rear cross traffic alerts, as well as auto braking. Our test vehicle also has the adaptive cruise control system, which will do uh, full lane detection, as well as adaptive speed, which you can set up right here. Oh, one last thing. This also has a heads up display, which is pretty basic, so I'm not gonna go into that. And, uh, oh, one more, one more last thing. This also comes with the Bowers and Wilkins sound system, which is amazing. In the settings here, I can go to sound and I can actually set up what kind of audio profile I want. If I want a studio, stage, or to emulate a specific room, either a concert hall or a jazz club. And yeah, it makes a pretty major difference. Oh, I got one more, one more, one more last thing. <laughs> uh, Volvo, so it has a little registration card tab holder right there. Okay. Now, time to go on an adventure. On the highway here is a great opportunity to test out the adaptive cruise control. Now it's super easy to use. I have a little gauge button here, hit that, set my target, and now I'm mirroring the vehicle in front of me up to my target speed. Now I can adjust my gapping with the buttons here. And then it also supports lane centering. So I'm gonna take my hand off just so you can see it. Now it's not really designed for wavy highways like this. It's more designed for freeway. Um, and you definitely should be keeping your hands on the wheel at all time. I am merely doing this to demonstrate to you how well it works. So we're gonna go around the corner and we're gonna see how long it'll keep us centered in the lane. Ooh, pretty good. Look at that. It's driving itself practically. How long will it do this for? Oop, this is a sharper turn here. Will it still do it or will it give up? Oh, it's saying hold the steering wheel. Okay, so as you can see, this system actually works really well. The suspension tuning that they have on this vehicle is excellent. They did a great job picking a nice spot between uh, pliable and also providing performance in the corners. You can really cut through the corners in this vehicle. And yeah, it's not a sports car, but it's still very fun to drive. Even though this is now a hybrid, it still uses the Haldex based system uh, for transferring power to the back wheels. That means it has a clutch in the middle that shifts that power front to back. It then relies on wheel braking on individual wheels to shift that power left and right. I've done lots of different videos with it and it's always proven to be a good setup. However, it is not really a performance driving setup because right now on the highway here, this vehicle is front wheel drive. That way it can eke out the best economy. And though, yeah, 30 miles to the gallon isn't anything exciting, uh, it's better than it would be if it had to run all four wheels all the time. In the instant of any slip or change of road surface, it will immediately put power to the back as necessary, up to 50% per Volvo. In the past, I've driven all sorts of different Volvo vehicles. And the one that I had the biggest problem with was the T8 hybrid. That one just couldn't push enough power to the back. But this one does not rely on an electric motor in the back for its all wheel drive system. So I'm expecting that this vehicle will do better because it has the combined output of both the petrol motor as well as that little 13 horsepower electric uh, going to both front and the back as necessary. You know what we haven't tried yet? A zero to 60. Now, the best way to do a zero to 60 on a Volvo, at least this particular one, is to actually do it as though you're doing launch control. Uh, brake down, gas down, release brake, forward you go. Three, two, one, and go. What? And 60. We're looking at 7.13 seconds which is not as fast as their claimed zero to 60, uh, but I think that's always ideal conditions. This episode's gonna be a little bit more unplanned than usual. Typically, I will take a vehicle like this, one with you know, low profile tires and a street oriented all wheel drive system on a road that I've already driven at least once. So I have some idea what I'm getting into. However, I really wanted to test this road out and I, have at, I, I just simply haven't had the time to come out and pre-run it with 
my Ford Ranger, which is what I typically use for pre-running roads. Uh, that way, if I run into anything very difficult, A, it's my own vehicle, and B, um, I have four low and traction systems and I have traction boards, I have all the equipment I need in case there's any serious issues. Now, this place was really appealing to me because I was at a distance and I saw there was a bare top mountain with what appeared to be a spiral drive up it and I'm like ooh, that looked really cool I bet that would make an epic drone shot so we're gonna try to get that epic drone shot today that's the plan uh, but I also have to find the access road I'm, I'm, they probably did not put a big sign up saying awesome spiral dirt road turn here so on a gravel road like this the Volvo is excellent this is really kind of the point of getting a vehicle like this typically is to deal with you know slightly slippery or kind of rough conditions but nothing too crazy the thing we do have to look out for though are potholes because we could be cruising along here at 35 miles per hour on this gravel road and all of a sudden bam one sharp pothole will end our day let's see if we can flick this thing a little bit Woo, a little bit traction control definitely kicks in quickly though so if this road stays true to what I saw in the distance, it should just spiral around this hill till we get to the very top. Whoa! That's a view. <laughs> wow. So I am looking towards Seattle right now over uh, the islands in the peninsula. So if you're not familiar with the Washington State Peninsula, it is actually pretty rural. It's one of the uh, lesser populated areas of the state. And a good majority of the peninsula is actually a uh, park. It's also a temperate rainforest. But this is actually the east side of the mountain. So we're actually in the rain shadow over here, which means that it's gonna be a little drier um, throughout most of the year. I'm definitely excited to seeing what kind of well, whether we get out here when these roads actually get a little bit more um, when it gets a little colder out can I go up here what have we got up here okay I've now taken a side road onto a more uh, a less traveled road this hopefully will take us up to the top of the hill and hopefully we'll get a spectacular viewpoint and then if this is too easy, we'll of course go find something else to really stress this all-wheel drive system. Why am I going back down again? Why am I going back down? This doesn't look right. Or am I going down before I go up? Oh, I'm going down before I go up, of course. Never know with these uh, roads. I mean, theoretically, these roads could just stop. <laughs> I'm feeling like the ridge in the road is getting a little close to my center. This only has 8.1 inches of ground clearance, which is good for the class. Not quite as good as Subaru, but better than Hyundai. So we probably won't scrape, but you never know. It's always good to be diligent. Wow, this is a steep climb. Okay, we got a, oh wow, what a view. Okay, this is a very steep climb. I think we're getting, I think we're at the top. Wow. This is epic. You know what? This is great, but we haven't tested this vehicle thoroughly enough. Time to go find a road that's a little bit more challenging. So that was certainly an amazing road we were on today. A great view at the end, I love it, and especially I love the fact that it was actually a pretty easy road because that is a very common scenario that somebody who owns a vehicle like this will do. They'll stay onto a forest road and yeah, you might have a slightly challenging section, uh, but 
you know, nothing crazy. That said, I do want to try this on a deeper crosscut. And for that, we're going to head to the other side of the forest. does. I'm gonna try to oh, lifting that tire high. Power is shifting around. Now I am not in off-road mode yet. Although maybe I should be. <laughs> okay, let's go again to off-road mode. Boop. Yeah, shifts that power around. And we get over with no damage. Onward, upward. This one is particularly gnarly, but it's not the last one. Uh, we have at least one or two more before we can turn around, so we're pretty much committed at this point. Right. So I'm trying to take a line that will not only lift tires, but will also not scrape my nose or underside. So it's a tricky balance. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh, we are not in off-road mode. Seems like when you stop, off-road mode turns off. That's interesting. Go back to drive, off-road mode engaged. Let's see how this shifts power. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Even on a climb like this, no problem. Well, okay, it's struggling a little bit, but it's getting up. <laughs> Obviously not as smooth as the uh, Lexus LX600, but I mean, come on, this is half the price. <laughs> And then the final one, which is like the final boss, the big one. Hope we don't bury the nose. Turn that camera back on. Just do front camera. Oh, that's helpful. Oh, I should have been using that the whole time. So I actually want to go kind of in the hole here because I want to make it struggle. Struggle! Yes! Yes! It did it. No overheating, no problems. Love it. Good job, little Volvo. Okay, there's always one more, it seems. Uh, here's the last, last, last one. Oh, and of course, I think it's even deeper. Are we gonna bottom out? Need to go slow. A little too pedaling. Okay, no, no scraping. How about our departure? We're good. Okay, well, that's our full review of the uh, 2023 Volvo V60 Cross Country. It is an excellent do anything, go anywhere wagon. Uh, that doesn't mean that you have to buy a crossover. You can buy a stylish wagon and get to places like this. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthat. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, share our videos. We make them for you, and I hope you enjoy them.